So what to expect for this week crypto market outlook and there are a lot of uh, fight FOMO. Okay, there are a lot of speculation speculation regarding about Binance and CZ. So what is really happening right now? As yesterday, the authority, right, the US authority have issued a summon on Binance and CZ to actually pay up about 4.3 billion. So how does this affect the whole crypto market outlook? Okay, I think this is quite serious as well. And of course, uh, not to forget that CZ have decided to step down or to resign uh, due to this matter. So how how is the crypto market is going to move on from here is very, very, very important because uh, another good point here is that CZ have also taken a good stand where he have decided to sacrifice himself in order to safeguard the crypto bull run. That is very important. So imagine if he do not comply to the laws and regulation in the US, I think that's where you're going to see a massive chaos, especially for the crypto market. I think most likely the crypto market might tank even more. So it is good that uh, CZ have made a a well a well good move, okay, where which is to safeguard everyone in crypto as well. Okay. So right now, here you can see all the allegations, okay, that is against Binance and CZ himself. Okay, so CZ have pleaded guilty on money laundering charges. Okay, according to the New York Times, this was on yesterday itself. Okay, and then right now you can, you can see the Department of Justice. Okay, have issued uh, Binance to actually pay up about four point three billion investigation. Okay, so this is the amount being charged by to to Binance that Binance have to pay this amount. Okay, and then here you can see CZ added that he will be stepping down as a CEO. Okay, evidently it was not easy to let go emotionally, but I know it's the right thing to do. Okay. So people have made mistakes and that's how we, we need to move on from here. Okay. And of course, right now we can see the whole crypto market is definitely a change 360 degrees. Okay. Especially, especially you guys who are actually holding cryptos in a centralized exchange. This is a time to actually take note that not your keys, not your coin. Because anytime the exchange can collapse, anytime the exchange can give uh, can give way. Okay, so you don't you don't want to store in so much of funds inside crypto inside the centralized exchange. That's where you need to self custody, which is the hardware wallet, or you can able to use the MetaMask wallet. So I've been mentioning to you guys every time when you trade on crypto, when you buy, right, or whether you invest, you need to safeguard. You need to self custody. Do not rely heavily on the exchange. Okay, so I think this is an important step. Okay, to take note. All right, on what's really happening. Okay, so I think this one will be ongoing. Okay, and then here you can see that uh, Chan Peng Zhao is bad, but from involvement in Binance for at least three years after the company received an, appoint, an appointed monitor. So probably they could, we could see a new CEO that will be coming in. Okay, so this is the new CEO here. Richard Tang will become the CEO of the company, right, as of now. Okay, so I think CZ, it is best for him to step down and to actually move on. With, with other rules. Okay, so I think this is a, a good move, a very good professional move by CZ himself. So that's why you can see yesterday that Bitcoin went all the way down, I think to about 35.6K and then now it's reversing back up again. So this is a, a very good recovery. Okay, you can see the buyback pressure is very strong and the confidence of the market is there to actually hold up that fight, that fight news. Okay, so this is the main article here, but again, I, I wouldn't stress that much to, to worry that much unless you are really storing a lot of crypto in the exchange. Okay, that's where you want to move out. Okay, it's time to actually move out your coins or your crypto funds to the ledger or any or any wallet, which is like MetaMask, right? Trust wallet. I think this is actually a good move to self-custody. Time to self-custody at the moment. Okay. All right, moving on next. Okay, we can see what's really happening regarding about the Bitcoin halving. What to expect? What are the expectations that we are going to have? Okay, so we are roughly about four to five months, right? Because halving is on April itself. Okay, so what are the expectations of the BTC price? Okay, what is the, how high can BTC go? Okay, so if you look on from here, the analyst reaffirms his prediction that Bitcoin will reach a pre-halving price target of 50K. Okay, emphasizing the 39,000 mark as the crucial boundary. So 39,000 maybe could be a solid support there. Okay, and then most likely if that 39 thousand were to break the current resistance now which we are facing then most likely 50k will be very soon all right so if you look here bitcoin to reach 50,000 pre-halving so pre-halving is before halving 
before April. So they are expecting, okay, this, this guy here from Twitter, Titan of Crypto, right, mentioning what? Bitcoin pre halving rally update. The pre halving rally, okay, he's mentioning about 39,000 to 50K. Okay, so you expect 39,000 to be the base, to be the floor. Okay, and what right now they are seeing, right, they are seeing somewhere around uh, 36, 36.5, 36 36.6. Okay, so there are a lot of anticipation right now. There are a lot of interest coming in uh, for BTC. As you know, the spot ETF approval is on the 10th of January. So what happened last Friday itself, the spot ETF was delayed or was postponed by other hedge funds. Okay, so SEC postponed. So right now we are seeing 10th of January, most likely there could be a 90% chance, 96% rate that the spot ETF were to approve. So with this spot ETF were to approve, most likely will send BTC to at least 50k according to this uh, sentiment here. Okay, according to this data that we are expecting. All right. So yeah, overall it's looking quite bullish. I believe we have already bottomed out and we are already facing out from the bear market. So this is a time where you want to start accumulating. Okay. So this whole year is for you to accumulate. So roughly you have about one more month left to accumulate because the 10th of January, the spot ETF will be might get approved. So you don't want to get in after the 10th. You want to get in before the 10th. So that is my, my take here, all right? So I believe you guys have also accumulated okay, since early January as well. Okay, so yeah, this is the overall market outlook. Okay, these are the ex anticipation and we are going, most likely might expect around this price. Okay, according to the historical data, most likely they could trigger at least 50K. Okay, now moving on next. Okay, I think there are a lot of things that we need to cover, especially the gaming sector. So gaming also creates a lot of hype at the moment. And of course, here you can see, uh, if you look at the gaming sector here, all right, if you look at the market cap, the market cap of gaming at the moment is only 13 billion. Okay, so 13 billion is considered quite small, okay, in the crypto market. Okay, so if you were to compare a market cap between the gaming versus Dogecoin, so Dogecoin during the bull run was about 70 billion for, for one altcoin alone, one meme coin alone, right, which is 70 billion. Okay, so you can see how little money is actually invested at the moment. Again, okay, how far this can go? What is the potential of the gaming sector here that we are looking at? Because I believe there are a lot of the gaming sector are actually wearing, are actually pumping. One by one, they are actually taking turns to pump, especially the smaller market cap. They are taking a huge pump at the moment. Okay, and then what you can see here, next you can see the altcoin market cap. What to expect right now? This is the Wyckoff accumulation. Okay, Wyckoff accumulation set up for the altcoin market cap. I think this is the total, total three market cap. So you can see well, the total crypto market cap for altcoins is touching the upper resistance line. Okay, so we are somewhere around here at the moment. Okay, now it's uh, having a short term sideways movement. Okay, and then what you can see right now, the price is somewhere around phase D. Okay, so where is phase D now? You can see here under the phase D, we are somewhere around the SOS area here. So SOS area here, you might see a sideways movement, a sideways accumulation zone. And then maybe you might see a pump towards the upside to phase E. So the consolidation pullback in this phase is the last chance to buy crypto at a cheap price, at a bargain. Okay, so everything goes vertical in phase E. So this is where you do not want to come in, especially when it goes phase E. Right now, we are somewhere around phase D at the moment. Okay, so you can see most of the outpoints have started to break out from the accumulation zone, have already started to create a new all-time high, especially the smaller market cap. Small cap coins are actually creating a new all-time high. So this is where you want to start looking into all these smaller coins and also pick the right narrative during this bull run. Okay, very, very important. All right, so moving on next to the crypto education. So crypto education here is very important. So I believe you guys here are here to actually them, are here to actually know more about not only picking the right coins, not only picking what is the next 100x coin, but to know what is the true education about crypto. Because crypto is white, is a white industry. Okay, so you're not only covering about altcoins, you are covering about layer one, layer two, so you're covering about technologies. Okay, so every week I try to create a five minutes crypto education segment so that you guys can be able to learn. Okay, so for today, for tonight, we are focusing more on the layer two bridge, right? So what is layer two bridge here that we are looking at? Okay, so layer two bridge is actually a bridge where you can be able to swap or to transfer from one chain to another network from one network to another network. So example, let's say you have a USDT under Binance Smart Chain, but you want to transfer, let's say, to Ethereum network. 
right? So the only, the traditional way that you can do it is that you have to transfer back to the Binance or to the centralized exchange. That is the traditional way. But with these bridges, also known as the Web3 bridge. So Web3 is focusing more on self data privacy. Okay, data privacy at your own hands. Okay, because we are no longer rely relying on the centralized exchange anymore. So that's where we want to use the decentralized bridge or the DeFi seg segment. Okay, so this is also known as the DeFi bridge. Okay, where they are covering many other blockchains and network. Okay, we are including layer one. Okay, which is the main mother chain. Okay, layer two, sub layer of layer one. Okay, and then we have mainnets and testnet as well. So these are all the bridges that you can able to use, that you can able to transfer your tokens from one network to another network. Okay, so example here, there are a lot. There are about 53 bridges here, but which bridge, but which bridge is reliable, right? So how to pick and choose which is the right one and which is more, which is much safer. So out of this 53 bridge, I have already picked and selected for today, which is Orbiter. So Orbiter Finance, okay, you can see here, right? Okay, so this bridge is a L2 bridge, okay? It's a decentralized cross roll-up bridge, okay? So this Orbiter is focusing mainly on Ethereum, okay? Ethereum native asset, okay? So example, right now you have Ethereum on the mainnet, Ethereum chain. You want to transfer to Optimism. That's where Orbiter comes in. Or you want to transfer Ethereum to Arbitrum, Arbitrum network, then you can able to do it. All right, so they cover a lot of network here. Okay, so not only Ethereum, but they cover about BNB as well. Okay, Arbitrum, Optimism, Polygon, so many networks. So right now I'm going to show you a demo, a quick demo. So now I'm in Orbiter Finance. Okay, so if you want to go to this site, you can able to post in the chat box. But anyway, after this video is done, I will post a link into the description box in YouTube so for you guys to learn. Okay, so right now, I'm in Orbiter Finance. You need to sign up using your MetaMask, your MetaMask wallet. Okay, your MetaMask wallet. Okay, so once you're in, and then you need to select which is the network that you want to use. Okay, so example, they have a lot of network. Okay, they have a base, Coinbase, Linear. Yeah, Ethereum is the main chain, Arbitrum, Starknet. So for tonight, I will be using OpBNB. So OpBNB is also similar like Binance Smart Chain because it's considered one of the cheapest as well. Okay. And then right now, I'll be using, I'll be transferring to Optimism example. Okay, Optimism Chain. So you have to choose a token. Which token you want to choose? So unfortunately, there's only one, which is Ethereum. Okay. But if you move to other chains, example. Okay, example, you move to Base. Okay, they have two choice. Okay, Ethereum or USDC. Okay. And then let's say Polygon. Okay, they have four options, right? USDC, USDT, DAI, and Ethereum. So tonight I'll be using OpBNB because OpBNB is very cheap. Yeah, I think it's not even, it's not, it won't cost you a cent at all compared to Binance Smart Chain. Okay, so example now I have 0 0.1 Ethereum. Okay, so I just want to transfer 0 0.05. Okay, so at the moment I have zero balance in Optimism. Right, 0 0.05. Okay. Let me refresh this. Okay, 0 0.05. Okay, so I'll be getting 0 0.049. So there is some small fees here. Okay, we did that. I think this will be the gas fees. Okay, so you just need to click send. Okay, and then you just need to approve. Right, they ask you to switch your network. Op BNB mainnet. Okay, once done, then you click send. Okay, confirm everything. This is the fee. So the withholding fee is the fees that Orbiter is charging. They are their commission fee. So 0 0.0012 times by 2000, which is the price of current Ethereum at the moment, which is about 2.4. Okay, so you confirm and send. So once done, you can see here there is a message for you to approve or to confirm. So you can see here, you need to confirm. So you just click confirm, okay? Okay, so what you can see now, OpBNB now is transferring to Optimism. Okay, so I'm transferring Ethereum under the OpBNB network to Optimism, okay? So you can see here, they even show you two transactions. OpBNB is one, Optimism on the receiving side, you will receive one also. But right, you can see here, 
The green tick means it shows successfully transferred. Okay, so you can see how much is the fees that OpDM is charging. Okay, you can see here what is the fee transaction fee for OpDNB is only 0 0.003. It's not even one cent at all. So you can see how cheap it is uh, compared to Binance Smart Chain. Okay, so OpDNB is also another L2, okay, which is much similar to Binance Smart Chain. But OpDNB is a hybrid between Optimism and BNB. Right? It's a hybrid. So that's why it is much more cheaper. So on the Optimism side, it's also received. So you can even check the fees as well. What is the charges? So the charges is only 29 cents. Again, okay, the transaction fee for optimism. So go back here. Right, you can see under optimism there is 0 0.05 Ethereum. Okay. So that's how you transfer from one, one network to another network. Okay. And on top of that, for orbital finance, they haven't have a own native token yet. So the more you transfer, the more chances that you will get the airdrop. So here under the history here, at least you need to have a minimum of 50 transactions. So far, I've done about 40 transactions at the moment. So you can swap here, swap there. You can swap to BNB as well. Uh, they allow BNB, BNB chain. So under BNB chain, you can select BNB. So if it is much more cheaper as well for the fees, for the gas fee, right? So you can able to do swap back and forth, back and forth to qualify for the airdrop. So there is one reason how you can able to maximize the L2 bridge, right? And able to, to learn more on this cross chain. Okay, so instead of relying on the centralized exchange, I think this is the best option for you guys to learn. Okay, for L2. All right, so yeah, I will post the video right once the session is over. I right? post a tutorial as well. Okay, so this is uh, L2 bridge. All right, so moving on next, uh, we can see here. Okay, so if you look at the top gaming industry right now, what we are seeing right now, there are a lot of smoke gaming. The gaming sector is actually booming. Okay. All right, especially we have Superverse, we have Nakamoto Games, okay, we have Broken Forge. All are actually rallying, taking turns to rallying. Okay, so and you can look at the market cap for gaming itself it is usually less than 100 million. Smaller cap has huge potential. Okay, we look at Gala Games as well, only about 1B at the moment. Look at Sandbox XC Infinity, it's less than 100 million. So XC Infinity, you know, the last bull run. Okay, I think it went up to about $72, not mistaken. So you can see there are a lot of potential here for XC Infinity. Okay, a lot of Gala games as well. It's been down. Okay, and then of course, uh, for those who are with me, I think I've uh, chosen Echelon Prime. So Echelon Prime is also another potential altcoin. It could be the next XC Infinity. Okay, so yeah, I have already breached all time high as well. Went up all the way to $8. Okay, so we have Veracity as well. Star Atlas also is one of the potential, which is under the Solana network. Okay, so all in all here, you can see, these are the gaming sector that you need to focus, right? Everything here, but how are you going to identify which is the, the best and top performing gaming coin? That will be another segment because here you have to see, not only you are looking at the market cap, market cap, no, one thing, but you're looking at the community and developer. Are they really developing? Are they really putting effort to actually you know, increase the value of the ecosystem. That is the most important thing. Okay, so an example here, you look at XC Infinity. Your all-time high is at $164. Okay, currently uh, you're getting at a dead cheap price at the moment. Only at what? $5, 5.77. Okay, so you can see the potential. Okay, from all-time high at 164 and right now you're getting only about 5.77. Look at Gala Games. Right, Gala Games. 82 cent all time high. Now, not even one cent or how many decimal here? 0.3. Okay, 0 0.00013 at the moment, all time low. But right now, where, where are we now? Two cent. Two cent out of 82 is how many? Okay, how many X here? 41X from here. So you can see the risk to reward here. Your reward is higher than the risk because you are buying at the bottom. You are still buying at the bottom here. Okay, compared to this top here. So this is the potential. Actually, on prime. Okay, so in Chenon Prime, you can see the market cap is only 200 million. It is so low. Okay, and then what? It have reached all time high at 840. Okay, so we got in somewhere around less than $3. Okay, some of you got in about 4.2. So congratulations, I think about 1x from there. Okay, so you can see these are the potential. This is how you actually search out points. This is how you actually do your due diligence. You actually go into the Telegram community, the Discord. 
we actually learn more about the gaming sector. Okay, so gaming sector have a lot of fundamental and there are a lot of future behind it. Okay, so I think this one will definitely boom in the next, in the upcoming bull run. Okay, so you can get it on your exchange as well. There are a lot of decentralized exchange that are offering this style of tokens. So yeah, moving on next to the technical side. So technical side, you can see here, currently on the Bitcoin dominance. Yeah, and before that, if you have any question that you want to ask me, feel free to put it in the chat box and I will answer it after I end this session. Okay, anything about altcoins, anything about the current news sentiment, okay, just put it in the chat box, right? So meanwhile, you can look here on the dominance. So dominance, price overall on dominance monthly is still uptrend, okay, still creating higher highs, higher lows, trend is up. So you might see a pullback here for dominance and this will retest at 51.2%. So if the dominance were to pull back, that's where outs will continue to rally. We have a chance to rally here. Okay. So let's look at the weekly time frame. The weekly time frame. Okay. The chart also is still maintaining uptrend, higher highs, higher low now. Okay. So it's also maintaining above this level here, which is the 51.55. So far, overall dominance is still strong. Okay. So you have to be very careful on your outs as well. Okay. If you are buying outs. Now daily, what we can see here daily is breaking towards the downside. Okay, breaking below the middle band. So you might see somewhere around this level to be playing out here, the support zone at 52%. So if dominance were to continue to break lower, and if Bitcoin can maintain sideways, okay, and do not and the Bitcoin price do not dump that much, then out, altcoins will have a chance to, to rally again. Okay, so that's what I'm seeing here. Then let's look at the Ethereum Bitcoin chart. Ethereum Bitcoin chart, you can see is Ethereum performing against Bitcoin on the money time frame, it is not. Okay, it's weakening against Bitcoin because you have break past this critical support zone. Okay, I've already broke past. So maybe we might see a short-term pullback. And this short-term pullback might give Ethereum a chance to rally back around here, around 0 0.0631. Okay, short-term pullback up here, at the, then altcoins most likely to fly. Okay, for the immediate short-term. Then on weekly time frame, you can see there's a momentum sell. This is a sell setup actually on the weekly time frame. So it's having a pullback now to retest on the sell zone. So on weekly, it's a sell setup. It's bearish on the weekly. Okay, until we break past the middle band here, above here, on 005965, then outs will definitely have a chance, especially for Ethereum as well. Then on the daily time frame, daily, what you can see now, it is above the middle band. Okay, so anything above the middle band, it is considered a change of direction from sell to buy. So it is actually now uptrend for the daily time frame. Okay, so at the moment now, it's bullish on Ethereum against Bitcoin chart on a smaller time frame. Look at H4, for hourly now, also is breaking up. Okay, also break past this uh, previous resistance. Now the next resistance to watch is this level here. 0 0.05555, okay? So these are the things to watch. Now moving on next to Bitcoin. So BDC, okay, so BDC, what is happening now? All right, so monthly time frame overall very bullish. So we are yet to, we test around this level here at the 38.4. So 38.4 will be the resistance to break or the resistance to watch. Okay. And then right now you can see on the weekly time frame. Now the weekly time frame is still holding very strong. Okay. Last week itself closing as a bullish candle again. And then this week you can see now it's creating a bearish candle. Okay. So far overall is quite bullish. Okay. It's still maintaining a very strong at this level here. So this level it needs to maintain around the 34.6. 34.6 will be a good re-entry buy. Now, looking on to the H4 time, daily time frame. Okay, so daily, what you can see, there is a change of direction from buy to sell. So it's actually downtrend now, you can see. Candlestick big below the middle band. So there could be a chance where the market might have a pullback again, at least around here, 37.3. But if you get rejected at 37.3, you might see a break again towards the downside because the resistance will be around here. 37.9. So 37.9 will be a crucial area to, to break and maintain. Overall on H4 is bearish. Sideways, momentum sell, to back for the sell setup here. So 36.7, it needs to break also. So far, it's having a hard time to, to break and retest and might see another pullback again for Bitcoin. Okay. All right. So we have about less than 10 minutes. I just want to focus on the, the gaming side. So if you have any question you want to ask me, feel free to put into the chat box or any altcoins that you want me to look at, feel free to put in. So let's look into the coin now. Okay, so we have a lot here. You see like super farm, super USD. 
Right, so yeah, another thing before I move on to Super. So for those of you who wants to, to watch the recorded session, you can be able to watch at my channel here. And don't forget to subscribe, right? YouTube.com at Crypto with B. Okay, so whatever recorded session, right, I will post it here. Okay, so whatever new videos also I will post here. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and to support. Okay, so moving on to Super. Right now you can see on the money time frame. So money time frame, you can see all time high is how much? $4.8. And now it's only 16 cents. 96% discount. So these are the opportunity that you want to go in. Again, you can see here, this was when June last year, bottom, or December last year. So December was the bottom. Okay, December, and then this month itself giving you another chance as well at 8 cents to actually buy back. Okay, give you two opportunities from December to November, almost one year. Okay, now it went up. So it went up about how much? I think about 1x only. Right, about 1x. Okay, 1.5. So this token utility is quite strong because not only is dealing with gaming, but it's dealing with NFT. All right, so and this one has a lot of strong influence by Elio Trade. So Elio Trade is a YouTuber, crypto YouTuber influencer. So yeah, definitely there will be a lot of ongoing activities for Superverse. So you can see there's a huge pump all the way to 21 cent. 21 cent. So you might expect a pullback right now. Okay, so let's do watch for the pullback. So the pullback most likely to maintain around the 16 cent. 16 cent is the price to maintain. Okay, and then look at daily. So the daily time frame right now, what we are seeing here, the price is doing a reversal candle now. Okay, so you expect a pullback is happening because the price has pumped a lot. So you might expect a pullback. So you want to buy based on the pullback. So all these levels to watch here, 13 cent. Okay, 13 cent is an area to watch. Okay, this level here, 16 and 13 cent. Okay, look at H4, 4 hourly. 4 hourly doing like extreme sell. A lot of reversal, retest candle done, price closing inside with a consolidation. Okay, another expectation most likely to be test back on the sell setup here at 17 cent. So these are the area where the price might consolidate. Okay, and then if the price were to break towards the downside, okay, then that's where we will see around 13 cent for the next level to to accumulate. Okay, so Superbus is one of them. And then next one. Okay, so next we can look into, right, let's look into Nakamoto games. So Nakamoto games also is another coin that, not, that you want to accumulate as well. Okay, so it's been rallying quite strong. So your bottom was how much? Five cent. Now it's already 1.28. So it read it to about how many percent here? Wow, about 2000, almost 2,000%. 2, so it's about 20x, 20 times. Again, 20 times. All time high, $8. So yeah, if you buy right now at this price, yeah, you have a chance of a 7, 8x from here, right? So overall, right now it is pumping. So you have to be very careful if you're planning to buy. Okay, so Nakamoto Games, you can see right now, weekly is a doing a reversal candle. So you might want to wait for a pullback. So if there's a huge chance of a pullback, you might see somewhere around here at 73 cents. But I highly doubt you'll come back here unless there's a massive fight again in crypto. Daily, BB squeeze. Price closing inside Bollinger Band. Look at weekly. There could be a short-term sell to buy. Okay, short-term sell to buy here. Price overall is still bearish on the 4 hourly time frame. Rejected at the sell zone. So how to accumulate or how to buy? All right, where is your entry price? Let's take from here. With this current low. So your retracement level on the golden ratio will be around 1.05. 1.05 for Nakamoto will be a good steal. Anything below $1 also, it will be a huge, huge steal as well. 92 cent. So 92 cent to $1. Okay, it's the best option to actually enter. Okay, best price to actually accumulate. Okay, and then moving on next. All right, you can see. All right, let's look at Gala Games. So Gala Games here, or what is really happening for Gala Games? Okay, so money time frame. Money time frame overall, the trend is up. It's still still downtrend. But you can see, all time high is how much? 
86 cent. Okay, so you got about, yeah, huge, your risk to reward, your reward is much higher compared to the risk. Okay, look at weekly. So the weekly, what happened is that it have already broke up from the descending channel, accumulation zone. Okay, I've already broke out. So what we want to see is that the price right now to come back and retrace back at least above the middle band, which is the 0 0.019. Okay, so right now you can see price also rejected at the top. Okay, 0 0.028. Okay, and then look at daily. So the daily time frame price overall, you can see BB squeeze break below the middle band. So trend is actually downtrend now on the daily. So you might see a pullback at least to retest on the 0 0.019. Okay, look at H4. Four hourly, price also downtrend. Candlestick change of direction from buy to sell, go back for the entry sell. So obviously right now, this setup is actually sell, sell setup. Okay, so you might want to wait for a pullback for Gala Games. Okay, so these are the setup here. You want to watch. Okay, pick from this high to this low. Okay, your golden ratio will be around 0 0.02. Okay, and then the 0 0.5, exactly around the 0 0.019. So these are the areas to watch for Gala Games. So Gala Games, you have a lot of time to accumulate. Okay, we are still early. Even if you buy right now, it is considered con consider quite good because you're still early. That is what we want. Going in early. Okay, and then harvest after the harvest. Okay, so that is the opportunity right now that you have in crypto market to recover whatever loss that you put in, in whatever investment that you go. So I believe crypto is here to stay. And it's the only salvation that you can have uh, in terms of recovery. Okay, so yeah, so whatever it is, I'm done with my session.